would go to India and uh, I, I started talking to people. I did this big, you know, uh, conference like this, about this size, a little bigger. Um, but it was all for people who were persecuted. It was the persecuted church in Orissa. And just the lovely, beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. And just to sit down and talk to them, thousands of them, and go, man, tell me, what, what, what happens, you know? And, you know, this, this lady, you know, I'm talking to, she's, she's, you know, there with her newborn baby. She's, she's feeding her, which is weird. But um, she just starts telling that me, you know, her story. And, and she tells me about how, you know what, I, I became a believer. And she says, literally, everyone in my village came knocking on my door one day. And I'm pregnant, you know, and they come with a lizard with its head cut off um, because you have to drink the blood of a lizard to convert back to Hinduism. And they said, you know, you need to drink this. You come back, come back to us. And she said she just grabbed her Bible and ran. She just talked about that horrifying day when everyone that was familiar to her came against her for following Jesus and just ran into the jungle, husband running after her. And she's going, I will not deny Jesus Christ. And, and her story about, she, she, just her and her husband, first child in the jungle by themselves, looking for food to eat, trying to survive and, and you're talking about giving birth, I, I, you have no idea. You've never had a child before. You know, your wife's there. You, you're like, what in the world do we do? We don't even have food for ourselves. And how they, they kind of just, you know, they just figured it out. They just kind of survive out there. Another lady, same thing. Another next guy, scars all over his body. Talking about, oh, yeah, when I became a believer, we, we just know. We just know it's going to end sooner or later. The persecution's going to come. And he says, so, you know, a few months into my relationship with God, when I'm surrounded by by guys with bats and you know just pieces of wood and just I just I just looked at God and go okay here I come because I knew that day would come and they beat me and everything else but somehow I lived through it I survived it and he's shown me scars on his head his legs and everything else talking about how some of his friends were not as fortunate and they just died and you know so I'm just listening to these guys and, and, and so then, then I'm asking the guy that's taken me around, and, 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 and I, I go, tell me your story. And he, he was a pastor now. He goes, oh, it was, he goes, well, I became a Christian when I was 11. Because I was 11 years old, and I told my dad, I go, dad, you know, I became a Christian. He says, my dad looked at me and says, don't you ever call me dad again. He said he took all my belongings. He goes, I still remember because it was raining. He took everything of mine and threw it out of the house threw it in the mud and says, get out of here. I don't ever want to see you again. You are not my son. And so he goes, he goes, I just remember 11 years old, I'm just crying, just walking around India. And I don't know if you've been around there. It's not a, a place where you just can find shelter or whatever. And he's just, man, can you imagine 11? Some of you guys have 11 year olds. You imagine they're just on their own and, and just, just wandering around trying to find anything to eat for the rest of his life. No family to go to, nothing big smile on his face, you know, I'm one of the happiest guys I've ever met, and just talking about, oh yeah, and then the Lord provided here, and, and then I would find food here, and this and this, this and years later, and he, he's probably like in his 30s, and he says, hey, but the, the miracle is, you know, just recently, my father became a Christian, and we reunited, and you know, and he's just got, and I'm just like, hearing these stories and I'm going but I'm asking him I go look everyone I'm meeting out here seems so intense you, you, you know I go aren't there any groups that are casual <laughs> seriously I go there has to be and he looked at me and he says he goes, not really he says because it doesn't make sense here why would you lose everything for something you don't really believe. If you just casually believe it, you know you're going to lose it all. You know you're going to be persecuted. So either you, you there's not really, it doesn't make sense to be casual. I go, I had never thought that. 